your host, Bruce Martin! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight. And boy, what a night we got for you tonight. I'm telling you right now, tonight's going to be a great night. Probably one of the best nights, one of the greatest shows I've ever produced, put together. Why? Because I say so. Um, it is Saturday night, could be Saturday afternoon, could be Sunday morning, depending where you are and where you're watching from. But I do appreciate you tuning in. Please subscribe and share this video. I would appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. I just want to get ready because let me tell you something. Tonight's going to be really good. Long, but good. So stick around and don't go anywhere because tonight is going to be a good one. <laughs> that actually went in the mouth. <laughs> I'll fix that later. Uh, but yes, <laughs> um, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, a great music performance by, by, Sir Shen and Zaritz Kaya, right here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Also, a great movie review tonight, ladies and gentlemen, The Lost Boys 1987, and I'm joined by my good friend, my good pal, M.W. Horror Reviews himself, Mark Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Mark's here. He's just getting off of celebrating a big birthday. Happy belated birthday, buddy. Hope you had a good one. And it's going to be pretty fun. You know, it's going to be a little long, but it's going to be interesting. You guys are going to enjoy it. You're going to have a good time. So get the popcorn ready. Enjoy. Sit down. And don't complain. Yes. <laughs> I'm giving you good content, huh? Come on. Come on now. Um, but yes, um, he got a tattoo, believe it or not. Yes, for his birthday. Check it out. Mark. Yeah, man, man, the dedication this guy has, I'm telling you right now, what a dedicated guy to get one of his favorite movies of all time on his arm, Sharknado. Wow, wow, wow. That is impressive, my friend, impressive. Um, he's going to kill me when he hears this. It is not his favorite film. Okay, <laughs> okay. more like his worst favorite, worst film ever, okay, pretty much. And believe it or not, speaking of Sharknado 2, and the 15th of this month, October, we're going to be going live. Me, my good friend, Scott, the host, and also the guy that's on the show tonight, Mark Wilson, is going to be on Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, live. Sharknado 2 Review. Do not miss it. Go follow the You Run Podcast on Instagram. Yes, the name has been changed, but he's still the same guy. So go check out Scar Scott. Scott. <laughs> my apologies, Scott. <laughs> Go check out Scott um, Harden's Instagram account. You run podcasts. Pretty good stuff up there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, earlier today, um, I actually had a near-death experience. I'm not even joking. Believe it or not. Um, I was coming home on the lift. One thing led to another. The lift driver was making a turn. I saw this white van coming at me. He was going so slow. The car I was in. A white van coming at me. You would automatically assume I would think about my girl or the family or friends. No. The last thought of my mind at that moment when I saw that car, that van hitting us almost, was White Castle. I was like, I'm never going to have another White Castle burger again. Yeah. That was something. I was in another world. My apologies to my family, um, my girl, friends. Hey, it is what it is. I like food. Can't blame me for that, right? Um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen. In other news, Facebook and Instagram was down, and believe it or not, it was a nationwide um, outage. It was really crazy. Everybody was going nuts. I was crying. Man, I'm telling you, my business is on Instagram and Facebook, and they want me to go to Twitter? Huh? Nobody knows my name over there. Instagram, everybody knows my name. At this moment, the theme song should have played for the, the show Cheers. So if it didn't play, another glitch, just like last week when I was supposed to turn into the Hulk. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. But yeah, it was down for about six hours. They lost about six billion dollars. Good for them, good for them, damn it. You took away all, everyone's business and 
Man, I couldn't reply to people that were trying to come on the show. So they, they left. They said, no, I don't want to be on your show. You took too long. I was like, go to hell. It was a good conversation. It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Facebook and Instagram is back up. But if it happens again, you guys can find me on Twitter at OfficialBruce25. I'm over there never. Only when Instagram and Twitter are done. I mean, Instagram and Facebook. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a little sad news to report. Alan Coulter, longtime announcer for The Late Show with David Letterman, passed away at 78 years old. Rest in peace to him. He was one funny guy. Him and David Letterman would bust each other's balls on the show all the time. But he was just a great guy. Alan Coulter, rest in peace. I mean, my condolences out to his family. I, I, when I was a little kid, I was watching that show. So you could just imagine. Movie news, ladies and gentlemen, I just saw The Many Saints of Newark a few days ago, and I'm going to tell you something, I got mixed reviews about the movie. Um, I'm going to give credit and give props to Michael Gandolfini, because he did a great job. An amazing performance by him. If anything, he's the one that stands out the most of the film. The film did not live up to the expectations or the hype that was garnered before the release, you know, through the trailers and the promotions. It did not live up to it. Um, it was a disappointment for me, but the good news is that David Chase is working on uh, future projects for The Sopranos. He just signed a five-year deal, five-movie TV deal, um, to produce more content. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully Michael Gandolfini gets his own spinoff, huh? I think that's pretty good. That's my, my hope. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Nash Bridges, a lot of people know about this. Nash Bridges is coming back. Yes, it's getting a big um, release in November. And check this out. If you guys don't believe I'm a fan of Nash Bridges, look at this, huh? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you... Still in the wrapper thing. Um, are you kidding me? Uh, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, Nash Bridges, Don Johnson, Cheech Marine coming back November 27th, I think. So I think that's pretty cool. It's going to be a two-hour movie. If things go good, if they get a good audience, it's going to move on to... Uh, full season, believe it or not. But yes, more to come tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I got a little surprise for you. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> yes, so coming up right after this monologue, I'm going to have a little surprise for you guys. So don't go anywhere and check that out. In other news, uh, Woody Harrelson is in the news. You know, he was pretty much at a party, you know, doing some promotion and stuff like that. One thing led to another. One guy got really physical with him, started taking pictures of his daughter, taking pictures of Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson went up to him and said, hey, stop taking pictures. He didn't listen. He didn't listen. So one thing led to another. The guy grabbed Woody Harrelson by the, he was drunk, grabbed him by the neck. Woody Harrelson punched him back. The guy got arrested for assaulting Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson was in the right because he was defending himself. I mean, I don't know. That's what's happening nowadays. You know, everybody's drinking and getting crazy and choking people out. Enough is enough. But that's um, a little Woody Harrelson news for you guys. Everything's good with Woody Harrelson. He didn't get hurt. His daughter didn't get hurt. He did, I think, end up deleting the pictures from the camera that the guy was taking pictures of his daughter and stuff. Speaking of deleting pictures, there was a wedding not too long ago, um, a few days ago, and the groomsman was the best friend of the groom, of the main guy getting married. The guy says, no, I need you to take pictures. You know, the groom, groom told the groomsman, the best friend, to take pictures of every, everything and everybody in the party. The guy was getting hungry. He was like, hey, I got to eat, and then I'll finish taking the pictures. The groom said, no, no, finish the pictures, and then you eat. The guy says, okay, fuck you. He deleted all the pictures from the wedding, from the camera that he was taking pictures with. How crazy is that? I'm with the guy. I mean, hey, you take food from me, too. I mean, you told me I can't eat. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? That's a death warrant right now. A death warrant. If people know how I feel about food, let's go back to the White Castle for a second. Okay. <laughs> well, yes, like I said, I'm with the guy. It is what it is. It happens all the time. Um, but, you know, they're no longer friends. <laughs> he deleted all the photos. They had to take the new photos. Imagine how embarrassing that would be. Honey, let's take the new photos now. She throws the ring at him. It is what it is. Um, training day, ladies and gentlemen. Nick Nolte, guess what, was supposed to play the Denzel Washington's character in Training Day. Nick Nolte. How cool would that be? I mean, I actually can see Nick Nolte in that kind of role. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, and Denzel got the role. Best decision ever, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm telling you right now, something about Training Day. My girl loves that film. She's obsessed with Training Day. I mean, when we argue, and we argue, she comes out with these lines from the movie, and I'm like, chill out. 
One, the other day we were arguing about the dishes and stuff like that. And she's looked at me and she's like, are you going to wash that last one? And I'm like, oh, relax, I'll get to it right now. And then one thing leads to another. Have you ever got your shit pushed in? You know, it was like, I was, I was in another world. Oh, I ran. I mean, of course I ran. What the hell? No. Shit, I ran. I went outside. Oh, I'm telling you, she can be scary. <laughs> scary, scary stuff right there, man. Have you ever had your shit pushed in? Get out of here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody's having a good, 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 good night. Um, I'm pretty excited. I'm a little pumped up. I'm not on the Benadryl anymore. I'm off that. Yes, I decided to go off that. As you can see, I'm still moving around. Sometimes I slow down, but it is what it is. Did you guys hear about the guy that jumped off the roof? Nine stories. Nine stories on top of a freaking car. Dents the whole car. And I think I got the picture. Check it out. And then guess what? Guess what? He survives. He survives. You know, what the story teaches me and gives me is like nostalgia. Because back in the day, I used to jump out of trees and scare little old ladies. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> no. See, what happened was I thought I was doing something funny, but instead I was scaring them. And what they did in retaliation was beat me almost to death with their purse. And one thing led to another. I spent a couple nights in the hospital. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> um, moving on, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff going on in New York. Right now, the, the lady that pushed the woman. You know, a lot of people are getting pushed in the subway, in the subway systems in New York. One lady pushes another lady into another subway and they blame it on mental illness let me tell you something if you guys seen the video I'll try to put it up check it out but um the lady literally pushes the lady into the train and it runs off if she knows what she's doing there there's no such thing as mental illness there's no mental illness right there in that situation the lady knew clearly what she was doing she ran away that's the end of the story Stop blaming mental illness or start putting more cameras and more police in the stations. Do your job, City of New York. Come on. In other news, ladies and gentlemen, 216,000 minors were um, victims of sexual abuse by um, many priests from the year 1950 to the year 2020. And long story short, um, these priests, all of them, got promoted. Yeah, that's the end of the story there. It's, it's insane. I mean, let me tell you something. I'm not religious, and I'm not afraid to say that, okay? Um, these priests are no good. In my book, they're no good. There might be a few good ones out there that are giving you stories, but let me tell you something. The, these priests that are molesting these little kids and for them to get promoted, are you fucking kidding me? No, 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 no. That is not okay. Not okay. That's a disgrace. These guys should be behind bars for the rest of their lives. Once you start thinking that mindset, oh, I want to be with this little boy, huh? You traumatize that little boy for the rest of his life, all right? It's insane. If I can get my hands on these guys, I would love to because I believe in the old-fashioned torture system. I believe in torture. I believe in the only way these criminals are going to find out what it's really like and how to get their mindset is torture the hell out of them. True story. Uh, oh, that's inhumane. What about these things that happen to these little kids? Oh, this, that, that's not inhumane. Think about that. It's insane. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me wrap this monologue up. Just want to let you guys know we got a great show for you tonight. Great music coming up by Sir Shen and Zaritz Kaya. Also, a movie review with me, Mark, and you. Don't want to miss it. The Lost Boys right here tonight. And believe it or not, I'm starting to get my first gray hair around here. I got my first gray here. Let me see if I can pull it out. Nope, nope. It's over here too. I got a few grays over here. Got a few back here. A few. <laughs> we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone Women seem wicked when you're unwanted Streets are uneven when you're down When you're strange Faces come out of the rain When you're strange No one remembers your name 
When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're strange. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. The streets are uneven when you're dark. When you're strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're strange. All right, yeah. When you're strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're strange. Welcome back to tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and believe it or not, we have a great guest for you tonight. I'm telling you right now, one of the best reviewers out there when it comes to movies, horror movies, anything. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of MW Horror Reviews, Mark Wilson. What's up, Mark? Mark? <laughs> How's it going, dude? You well? <laughs> man, it's been a crazy ass day. <laughs> oh, man. And you know, you know, you know, because um, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, everything's messed up right now. So we're just trying to get by. <laughs> yeah, the end is nigh, my friend. The end is nigh. Oh, man. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. Nice, nice. Um, in every show, we always have a drink. You got yours ready? Always, always. Ooh. I'm not sure drinking though, man. I can't drink. I can't drink that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm literally a beer man, and that's about as far as it goes for me. I like beer though. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a Budweiser guy. I got a fridge full of Budweisers, so I'm definitely yeah. into beer and all that. Oh yeah. Uh, what's going on with you right now? Like besides the MWR reviews, what else you got going on for yourself? Um, not a great deal to be honest with you, man. I mean, I'm just plodding on. Work's busy. We're just cracking on with work as usual. It's in very, very intense time of the year. You know, Christmas is around the corner. I work in construction. And I have my own construction business. So it's getting to that time of year where everyone's like, can we do this before Christmas? Can this all be done before Christmas? And I'm like, there is not enough hours in the day for me to be able to <laughs> fulfill these sort of time scales. So, it's, so work's a very, very stressful time at the minute. But other than that, just family life and watching TV, man. Other than that, I'm not doing a lot. <clears throat> got this instagram account which is doing really great you know mw horror reviews uh, you probably say oh eh, i just do this for fun you know that's true but it's actually affecting other people because they're like oh wow i want to see that movie well i want to check out his reviews you know like uh, when i came across your account i was i think i knew scott first i'm not sure who i found first i don't really know but um you know i was like okay cool i never seen an account with a detailed review like yours is, you know, like I'm not, I'm not even joking. Now, I mean, I'm seeing them more often, you know, like uh, what's her name, Horror Review Girl. And um, yeah. she has her own review thing. But I've never seen anybody with the detail that you put into this. And you got to give yourself some credit for that. I mean, that is pretty badass right there. No good. Oh, thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always said from the before, I've always said to you and Scott, like, <clears throat> it's just sort of grown in, in a way that I never really expected. I mean, it's not massive, it's not world record breaking stuff, you know, I just, 
but it was more the people that I've met along the way, which has sort of changed it into something I never expected it to be. You know, I met Scott and Scott's had me on the show a few times and then through Scott, I've met you and then we've gone really well and we've done stuff together and then I've met Horror Review Girls. We speak a lot all the time now and there's a lot of people that have sort of come into the fold who I speak to regularly or daily or weekly and, and we discuss a lot of stuff together, which is sort of what the intention was with the page. It was more just to chat with people who are interested or interested in hearing my opinion and also be able to hear other people's opinions or something that I've watched and, and talked talk about it together. And it's been cool. It's been cool. It's been a it's been a weird sort of six to six to twelve months since I started doing it. But um yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm on board for it. It's nice. It's, I like the direction it's taking. I, I completely agree with you. And let me tell you something. This has been my best year, too. I mean, before this, I was just um, doing little podcast things here. I had like two, three viewers. And and to be honest with you, I'm being honest here, and I'm going to say it on the air because I think a lot of people want to know. It's because of Scott. we got to give yeah. credit to Scott that, One of um, that I got. I'm getting this far myself. And also you, thanks to you, I want to thank you because the first time we were together on that show, it was just even like that just made everything just much better. The reviews that we've been getting, the feedback, and I was like, man, that's so cool. That's why we call each other the three amigos on the Instagram <laughs> and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Like it's a good connection between all three of us. And like I said, I thank you and Scott for helping me grow this year. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, well, thanks, man. I mean, I don't really think I can take any of the credit, to be honest with you. I think Scott has, has sort of crafted and created all of this himself. I mean, the the, the level of effort that that man must put in daily to his oh, channel man. and to his podcast and to his Instagram page is insane. Really, really does. I mean, I, I literally watch a couple of films and then it takes me a few days to sit down and write something and edit it and process it together but scott is relentless he is constantly constantly putting in the effort and he's an absolute jedi for doing this kind of work he does he's really really good and it shouldn't go unnoticed and i think if it wasn't for scott then i would never have met you i'd have never probably taken my page as far as i have either because he constantly gives that drive and that sort of recognition and, and and celebration to everything I do as he does with you as well I mean we all know and uh yeah he's a cool guy he's a cool guy and and life's a better place for meeting him the the ambition he has you know what I mean like there's no quit like this guy has ambition and he keeps moving mm-hmm. forward and he keeps changing the game you know what I mean? and and you don't see that a lot this I mean I, I see a bunch of accounts and you don't see the kind of shit that this guy has done they're like wow like it kind of throws me back. I'm like, this is pretty cool, you know? And I thought, I, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed myself. So, yeah, we let's give Scott Harden a freaking round of applause. Come on. We got to do that. He's just, he's just a, a badass dude. If he sat there now on the sofa and he'll just go inside and stuff like, oh, God, God, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So... Let's talk a little bit about this MW Horror Reviews. How did it come to be and what what made you, what was the motivation behind it? Well, to be honest with you, the reason I started doing it really was was when we had my daughter. We we had a baby and babies don't like routine and like sleeping like normal children do. So so I would find myself up at like three o'clock in the morning or coming down early on in the morning, should I say, because my wife used to do the night shift. But I'd find myself coming down at like four o'clock in the morning <clears throat> so my wife would get some rest and I'd find myself getting back. And before I started doing the horror reviews page, I was more consistent with with like TV shows. So I'd watch like a lot of horror TV shows. I missed quite a lot of the big horror films. I didn't see a lot of them or sort of keep up with some of the main franchises and stuff that I should have done. So I find myself sort of sinking into TV shows more than anything and I'd, I'd watch a lot of TV episodes and I'd watch like Hannibal religiously and American Horror Story and stuff like that. And I sort of found myself shunning films quite a lot. And then since we had the baby, <clears throat> I found myself getting up in the morning, I'd just be banging on a film and do an hour and a half on a film. And then I thought, oh, well, I could use this outlet for something. I'm up anyway. I might as well do something with it. I always wanted to have like a creative writing outlet and never really knew what to do with it. <clears throat> I'm a horror. I thought this is a perfect opportunity. So 
it just started with the letterbox stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but letterbox yeah. is pretty similar to what I do on Instagram. So I write down my reviews on there. Then I take that and then I edit it onto Instagram. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it, really. There was no sort of epiphany behind it. It just sort of stemmed from early mornings and, and boredom. <laughs> yeah. And it started, what, six months ago, you said? No, it was about, I'd say about uh, probably Christmas last year. Probably Christmas time last year was when I really started. I think that was when I set up the the page. It was probably about December time last year. Wow. And from there, obviously, things have just escalated to, to levels I never really thought they would. I didn't even expect to have any sort of following or anybody really care or give a shit. It was more, I was more doing it for my own sort of luck, you know, because there was a lot of films that I've seen. And there, for instance, the Hellraiser Hell film, I'd seen one and two never bothered journey and past it i thought there's no reason or drive to make me want to see those films because i've heard the terrible but i thought if i've got some sort of logging system where i'm having to make sure that i tick it off as a list as i go mm -hmm. then maybe it will drive me to sort of complete these franchises same with the chucky the chucky films are one of the ones the main ones that sort of made me do it because i've seen everything up to seed seed was awful and i'd heard good things about the new films that had come out afterwards and i was like if I, if I have this sort of system where I'm ticking them off as I go, then maybe it'll make me want to complete them. So, so I did that, and, and yeah, that was mainly really it. It was just more a case of doing it for myself so that I could go back and, and look and think, oh, I've seen that, and that's what I thought of it. Do I want to rewatch it? And obviously when my reviews first started coming out and I first started doing it, they were quite short, only real simple, just a few words and a, maybe a couple of sentences. Then as it's gone on and the more people I've got involved with, such as you and Scott and, and everybody else, it's just I've started to take it a little bit more seriously than I did before and put a bit more effort into it than I ever have done, really. Mm -hmm. It seems to be going well. I'm, everybody else seems to be giving me great feedback from what I'm doing. And they're then now taking what they've seen that I've said about a film and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to go check that out because you, cause you've said it's good. And then they'll come back to me after they've seen it and they'll comment on the post and be like, oh, we just watched this. This was great. We watched it. We really liked it. Thanks for recommending it kind of thing. So for that reason, I suppose it's a little bit worthwhile, isn't it? I mean, it, it's definitely different. I mean, you can't argue with that. It's something that people haven't really seen. And that's why you gain that kind of attraction and that fan base is because people just haven't seen that kind of the way you, I think it's the way you write it. You know what I mean? Everybody write, re, re, writes reviews and stuff like that, but the way you word it, everything, and you put it into context, I think that's what fascinates the viewer. You know, like, I, 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 I my bad. I read it. Um, I, I share it when I, you know, when I can. And my, my, the wife reads it too. She's always telling me, have you seen Mark's review? And I'm like, not yet. I think I'm she's checking. Bad, if I'm honest. <laughs> huh? And I think she's my biggest fan, if I'm honest. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's always telling me, have you seen it? I was like, not yet. I'll see it when I can. Because just like you, you're like, I got this page and I got the real job and I got the family and this and that. Yeah, me too. I'm like the real job. Away, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like, it, there's always something to do. And that, that's the good thing about what we do. We work the real job. We got the family to take care of. We're doing the show and, the, and your review show. But it keeps the mind going, you know what I mean? It's like you're never going to get bored. <laughs> no. You know, there's no, movies no, to no. review out the wazoo. <laughs> you got a bunch of movies yeah. to review, you know? Yeah, yeah. But like I said before, though, then you get to that stage where people are, oh, can you review this? Oh, we've just seen this. We really want to know your thoughts on it. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I will so much to catch you up on. <laughs> no, trust me, I get those all the time myself. I'm like, ah. Uh, I mean, you know how my reviews work. I don't yeah. tend to go off after I've watched a film and do a lot of research and put it into the film. It's literally just how I see it, how I watch it, and that is it. Exactly. Which gets me into a lot of stick, really, because sometimes I'll have people come at me and be like, oh, yeah, but they did this, that, and I'm like, yeah, but that didn't come across on the film. So that's, I watched it how I see it, and that's how it's getting presented in the review. So. I don't understand people, man. I'm telling you right now, like, human beings, like, I'm like, okay, this guy, he, he's... Okay, first off, you know, whether you get paid or not, that's not the point. You're doing a job to give people your experience watching or, you know, watching the movie and you're writing it down what you think. Of it. They come at you and be like, well, I'm going to unfollow you because I don't, I don't agree with that. I'm like, 
do I care? I mean, that's me. Do I care? Go right ahead. I'm still doing. I got people actually interested in that movie, you know? Me and Scott was talking the other night. I messaged Scott. Where I put my, what review is it I put up? I put a review up about 12, uh, 13, 13 Ghosts. And I was saying how, how on the 13 Ghosts, I was talking about like paranormal films are not really my thing. I'm not a big believer in the spiritual. And once you're sort of gone, you're gone. That's it. That's worm food. That's where I stand on that sort of situation. And I put that sort of in my review a little bit more subtly than worm food. And then... Um, some guy came at me in 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 the DMs and he was and he was proper laying into me and he was like, oh yeah, I can't believe this and and Satan's gonna come for you and and you belong in hell with the rest of the non-believers and sinners and I was like, whoa, and I sent it to Scott and it turns out he'd already previously messaged Scott after his um I think Scott had done his conjuring review and talked about how he was on a similar stance to me and he's not a big believer of anything beyond and. Uh, yeah, he'd come at Scott as well and like fully unfollowed Scott and blocked him and was like, you you, you have a special place in hell saved for you and all this. <laughs> and I was getting a similar treatment. I was like, wow, you you and you are not okay. <laughs> no, this that's a lo freaking loony. He's uh something's wrong with that guy. I mean, like I said, it's your review, you do what you gotta do. Um, you, a lot of people are fans of it but like if you you did a review of Back to the Future which is my all time favorite movie and you said oh I think it sucks I think it's the worst movie of all time in your words I'll be like that's your opinion that's your exactly, opinion exactly exactly a lot of times where I'll, I'll completely trash and bash a film but people will come at me in the comments oh, I really liked it and I'm like I am genuinely glad you had a great experience with this film unfortunately it just wasn't for me yeah. enjoy it embrace it it's just not something i enjoy these are all my own personal experiences and my own personal enjoyment of a film it's not to be taken as gospel <laughs> i'm 100 behind you on that one Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bar. Man, but what a conversation we've been having. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's time to talk about what we really came here to talk about, and that's The Lost Boys, 1987. One of the greatest films to come out of the 80s, probably one of the greatest um, vampire films to come out of the 80s or any any decade. I mean, this is definitely one of the greatest vampire films, if not the greatest. Um, and um, there's no argument there. But you talk about ratings and, uh, you know, how much money it made. That has nothing to do with it. It's just, it's a cult classic automatically. And I got right here, as you saw before, we got a great guest here tonight that's going to help me through this, okay? Because I can't do this movie alone. And who better to ask than the man himself, MW Horror Reviews, the guy that does the best reviews anywhere else i'm telling you right now mark i mean thanks for staying with me and uh hanging with me and let's do this together man there's no other way to do it yeah i got your mom let's go <laughs> yeah man it's, it's definitely that type of film that you just don't want to you don't want to screw it up you know because it's that great of a film i actually became a fan of it the first second time i saw it um I was a little concerned about the rating, you know, and stuff like that, you know, not the rating, actually, how much it made. The rating was 76%, which is not bad at all. It's, it's a really decent um, number, if you really think about it, for a, a 1980s film. But the fact that it only made $30 million and cost about $8 million to make, that's what kind of bothers me. $30 million? Yeah. I mean, Yeah, it's not a great profit margin, is it? Let's be honest, Dan. I mean, for me, this has only grown in in reputation and, and respect over the years. I mean, it's it's with, like you said before, it's without a doubt a cult classic. It's it's something that's fermented so so much in pop culture today. You can't you can't avoid people quoting these these this film and tattoos that people have of this film and and fancy dress that people wear of this film throughout throughout the Halloween season. It's 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 massive and probably more massive today than it ever has been. I mean, I grew up in a in a time where I first saw this as a kid. Um, I say kid, I'm talking teen, young teenage boy. And 
it, I didn't get it. I didn't get it, and I didn't appreciate it, and I, and I never, I never give it the respect it deserved until I revisited later on in life as an adult, and I was just blown away by how much I, I, I wasted, how much time I wasted not, not being able to watch this growing up because. As an adult, it's it's an annual watch for me now. I watch it yearly, and sometimes even more than that, and watch it a couple of times a year. But especially as we get towards the spooky season like we are now, it's 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 definitely going on in my house. Wow, yeah, I mean, yearly—that's dedication right there. I mean, holy, I haven't seen it in probably maybe four or five years. I mean, it's one of my girl's favorite films. She literally watches it all the time. But I, you know, I saw it, you know, earlier, and when I was watching the movie, I was like you just fall in love with the film again, the characters, yeah. the, the music. I mean, hold on a second, hold on. The soundtrack to this movie is by far one of the greatest from any films. I mean, you could agree yeah. on that. Oh, 100%. I mean, you've got the amazing, you've got NXF, you've got the likes of Echo and the Bunny Man, probably one of the best version of People Are Strange covers in this, in this film. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got saxophone man himself, Mr. Tim Capella, we still believe. Yeah, of course. And um, what's his name? Gerald McMahon? Is that his yeah. name? Yeah, Crying Little Sister soundtrack, obviously, a sad soundtrack song, which is synonymous with this film, obviously. Something I noticed on my latest rewatch, though, looking at it from a critical standpoint, <laughs> that song is used a lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> in this film. Like, every sort of dramatic theme that is building, you can hear the wow <laughs> building. <Yeah. through. laughs> and then the <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> There was a, believe it or not, there was a, besides the soundtrack, an amazing soundtrack, but, but like, you know, the, the stuff that went on behind the scenes that a lot of people didn't know about, you know, like, for example, uh, Corey Feldman, you know, he, he got fired from the, fil from the film. While he was filming the movie, they fired him. They said, you know what, we're going to recast you because he kept showing up drugged and high and out. He had alcohol and stuff like that, um, high levels of alcohol. And then, you know, he came back the oh, next really? day. Huh? Oh really? I did, I wasn't aware. Was it was that all during the filming of this film? Yeah, and then um, they, I know he's obviously got a very troubled past, hasn't he? And he's um, certainly got his issues still to this day. But I wasn't aware it was at such a young age that he was dealing with those kind of problems. Yeah, he was, and then he came back the next day and he apologized to the director Joel, and he says, "You know what? I won't mess up again." And but could you imagine this movie without Corey Feldman? I mean, Corey Haim and um, Kiefer Sutherland they stole it from me. Even Jason Patrick. But could you picture this? Yeah, movie Jason Patrick as well is great in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, Jason Patrick as well stood out for me as, as, as a as a great in this. Um, yeah. And as you say, Keeper Sutherland as well. He's he's, he's oh, probably man. his most iconic role for everything that that man has done in his career. He has cemented himself as David one hundred percent. There is no there's no other way about it. When I see him now to this day, and I have people like, "Oh, that's a guy from Twenty Four. I'm like, "No, you idiot! That's David from The Lost Boys." <laughs> 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 Which he did good in 24, don't get me wrong, but but yeah, he's always going to be known as David. He is, well, yeah, of course, of course. And uh, and like you say, Corey Haim as well, I thought he was fantastic in this. Like he, he for me, he was he was the best. I loved him in this. I thought it was so funny. Just his, just his whole attitude and, and sarcastic nature was just on point. And these are the kind of things that I missed when I was growing up that never... I never, I wouldn't say I didn't appreciate, but it just sort of went over my head as a, as a young, as a young man. I didn't really sort of get the level of humor yeah. and stuff that was coming out from this. I mean, the whole scene when, when um, Michael's starting to change and he's realizing what's going on at home and, he, and he's starting to feel, feel the yearn to go, especially when, when Sam's in the bath and he comes in and he, and the, and the dog comes in and knocks him through the door. And it's after that scene when he goes downstairs and, and he's like, oh, my own brother. Yeah. Blood <laughs> and you wait till I tell mom. And he's told he up runs the up the stairs. <laughs> he runs up the stairs to call his mom. And you see Michael fly through the window, just floating past, asking for help. <laughs> and that whole thing, literally, I laugh for a good solid 10, 15 minutes from the moment that I see that bath scene start. I'm like, I know what's coming and I know it's going to be great. And every time it is just as entertaining as the first. He's like, Mom, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that part. It's so yeah. good. It's so good. Oh, man. Even the effects were good back then. I mean, you got to give the effects, you know, credit. I mean, it was just amazing for the, yeah. for it's, it's time. You yeah, know? you see, I'm, it's weird because I'm not really big on the whole vampire subgenre. It's not something that I, 
I tend to actively speak out. I mean, there is a lot of great ones out there, but for me, it's it's more it's more the handling of the vampires themselves that tend to kind of kind of put me off, and, and it's when they delve too much into the creature of the night aspect. But with this film, it's so subtly done and so so perfectly done. When you see the change, it's literally teeth, contact lenses, and a little bit of heightening on the bone structure around the face. I mean, they've not gone full Buffy the Vampire Slayer or or dawn um, from dusk till dawn. You know, it, it's it's done to the perfect balance, and 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 for that, it, it is why it is one of my favourites in terms of the vampire vampire subcategories. I mean, even like the gore and stuff. There's just not a lot of gore in this. You know, you get to the first sort of scene of violence you see is 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 in the desert. Mm-hmm. Is in the desert when when David first takes Michael and he's like, "Come join us," kind of thing, and he's showing him what they're about to do, and he's like, "You're not going to want to miss this." And they all jump from the trees and they start tearing skulls off. Other than that, and probably the final scene at the end at Grandpa's house when they take him on once and for all, there's not a lot to it in terms of violence. You have both two five minute scenes, and everything else, all the attacks up until this point are done from a from a point of view perspective from a camera. You don't see vampires flying in and taking people out you literally just see the camera coming down to the top of the car the roof getting ripped off and then that's it it cuts to black you know it's it's not necessarily an extremely violent film it's yeah it's perfectly balanced and it's it's one of those that i feel is very although it's an r-rated film i think it's very kid friendly i mean i watched it at a young age and and it never really terrified me or anything like that you don't realize like you said before you said it before twice um when you get older, you know, you see these movies, you get a new appreciation for it. You know, back in the yeah. day, you're like a little kid, you know, you remember, you're like, oh, that was a good movie. But when you get older, you're like, wow, this is not just a film. This is a masterpiece for yeah. uh, for its genre, you know. Um, but let's go back to that, the, the grandpa. He was half vampire, right? <laughs> I don't know, was he? I mean, he was very aware of what was going on. And it it wasn't until this rewatch where actually where they get to the end and they're all walking up to grandpa and he gets the stuff out of the fridge and he's like, one thing I can't stand about Santa Clarita, it's Santa Carla, all the vampires. And they all just look at him to say, you knew this whole time and you didn't say anything. <laughs> that's what we need is like, you know, cause um, we're going to get to the sequels in a second, but that's what we need. A prequel that shows his story. That would be epic. And his encounter with maybe a younger version yeah. of Keith or Kiefer Sutherland or something, you know? Imagine if he was like a descendant from Van Helsing or something and he was there oh. to sort of protect the town. I mean, that would be epic. We should just ride it ourselves, man. <laughs> yeah, let's get together, man. Let's do it. <laughs> It'll be pretty we'll good. We'll get in contact with who we need to for the rights and we'll just take it on ourselves. I have a question for you. You know when um, Corey Haim uh, closes his door and he has like a poster of Rob Lowe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I have one of David Hasselhoff. Yeah, it is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's uh, Pamela Anderson. Um, <laughs> but uh, you got you used to have any uh, posters like that back in the day, or maybe not. Um, no, I don't think I did really. I mean, my I wouldn't have been allowed to hang posters on the wall in my house. My parents would have. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You're damaging the wall. Um, so no, I never. <laughs> I never, I never had anything like that really growing up. I don't, I don't know, and I don't have anything now as an adult. Really, I have yeah. stuff, but I'm, I'm not allowed to have it all on display. My wife, my wife wouldn't let me have stuff like that around the house. I could picture your wife telling you now, take that poster down. You're like, it's a tack, it's a tack, it's yeah. not making. <laughs> she would. She'd be like, you're not a teenage boy anymore. Tell that picture down. I'm like, no, oh, but I, I was never allowed. Let me do it now. It's my own house. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but yeah i mean like where can you go wrong with this film um pretty much starts off with a bang you know like they kill the officer they're in an amusement park and then it goes on through there this whole time Corey feldman and um cory Haim, you know can't get their names under you know their names take, but yeah but just to take you back to the set as well then i mean it's the location point from this is just is fantastic i love i love the fairground setting at the beginning and the way that it's introduced throughout throughout the film's runtime, it's so cool. But one thing that I really, really appreciate the most about this film more than anything is, is the whole setting itself, like, like Grandpa's house, that place looks incredible. I always remember growing up and seeing this film and thinking, I want to own a house like that one day. 
with all the taxidermy stuff about just a land surrounding it and everything. But the one that stood out the most is is the actual vampire lair, the cave. The first time we go down there and you see everything around, you see all the set pieces and you see all you see all the items placed around and you've got the doors poster and you've got all the all the jewelry and the surfboards and all the treasures looking like something from out of Goonies. The thing that is to me, it's like like you just don't get that anymore. Everything now is just filmed on a green screen and it's all just added in digitally afterwards. And you, as I was watching this, I was just like, somebody's done that by hand. That has been built and that has been taken time. Someone has painstakingly put the effort in to place every single item on that set in the right location. Something that just, it just doesn't happen these days. It's just, it's a dying art. And it, I always It's a lost gem. It's a lost it is, and it's something that I moan about all the time in my reviews is how much I detest CGI. I'm like, man, just take me back to the good old days with the Lost Boys and the Gremlins, and you know, when things was all done practically and on location, of it, exactly. like a computer game. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, there is times when it's done right, and when it's done right, it looks great, but I just can't stand it. I just hate it, and it's just, I think- it just looks so much better digital. It just looks so much better practical, practically. Which is what my biggest problem was with like the It remakes. Like those films were fantastic, and they were just so ruined by the heavy-handed CGI throughout. It's like, why you've just trashed what could potentially be one of the greatest Stephen King adaptations ever by putting in shit graphics, which could have probably been done practically for less money and looked better. You know, it's it's just mind-boggling sometimes, and I just put it down to laziness or or. The fact that people like to try on new technology, but for me, it's just one thing that I really, really appreciated about this was just how well all the practical work was done throughout. You know, it's 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 really, really solid. Everything is done right. I, I couldn't agree more. Like that. I just want to go back real quick about the CGI. I feel like they should keep those for the the, the Marvel films. You know, like the superhero yeah. films, but yeah. not the not these. Uh, the movies that's supposed to take place on location. So what you said right there was perfectly said about CGI. I'm, I stand with you on that because yeah, it gets a little tiring after a while. You're like, come on, come on. I mean, you're there's cheap, a time and a place cheap. for it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, there is a time and a place for it. And these Marvel films look incredible. They do look incredible. There's no denying that. And there's a lot yeah. of big budget Hollywood films that come out that look incredible. But when you're making a low budget horror and you don't have the budget to stretch for CGI to make it look worthwhile. Just choose practical because it always looked better, especially in these types of films. You know, there's just no need for it in horror, I don't think. There's no need for it at all. I can understand it when you use it on a set point or, you, or you're trying to make something extreme, like like obviously when we get to the CGI sub, sub, subcategory of horror, like nine times out of 10, you're going to have to have some level of CGI within those films. But most horror films do not need it. And which is why most of the greats from back in the day stand up better than most today. Besides Casper, okay, Casper needed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scott's watching fair. this and he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch that this Halloween season, I really do, just so I can come back at you and say, what are you thinking? Man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I mean, my favorite, um, before we wrap this movie review up, my favorite scene was the bridge scene, you know, where the train was going by and um, Jason Patrick was uh, hanging from the bridge. And just, the, I think the acting and the, the how do you say, the way Kiefer Sutherland was, but the way Jason Patrick was acting and as it was falling and, you know, even though it was all put together and stuff like that, it just, it was amazing. That whole scene was just amazing. To me, that was my favorite part of the film. There's countless others, but did you have a certain favorite besides him running? Yes, yeah, I do actually. To be fair, my favorite part of the whole film, and and it's not even a really major section either. It's it's when Sam first goes to meet Edgar and Alan Frog in in the comic book store, and they're, and they're walking around, and he's humoring them, and he's and he's talking to them about the Superman issues and stuff. For me, that's and it's the same with when I said to you earlier about when they're in the bath scene, and then they come through, and he's 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 talking to to his mom about um about Michael it's it's those interaction scenes which which for me uh, uh make this film stand out above everything else because the the vampire is more it's more of a subplot than it is of anything else you know it's about this family moving to this new town and having to deal with these changes and 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 it's a really really interesting story mm-hmm. and it just feels like even without the vampire section to it, it it would still make a great film 
Um, so for me, the, the comic book side, side of things, when he first walks into the comic book store and he, and he meets Edgar and Alan, it's, it's a really cool scene that I always look forward to seeing when it comes on. I, man, watching it again just brings back the nostalgia part, you know what I mean? It's just such a great film um, from start to finish. And, um, you know, it's definitely on my one of my top favorite horror vampire movies, you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's right up top there because you watch it every yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you uh, said, we, we, with the announcement of the sequel coming up, or I say sequel, we're talking reboot. Sequels, just, yes. Reboot. There is sequels to this film that I've actually never gone back to or encountered. I mean, I believe um Feldman's back for both is he is Feldman involved you know a little bit more about this than I do yeah he actually came back in the 2007 no 2008 and 2010 version Corey Feldman was in both there's rumors that he might make an appearance in the new one now, I don't know that's what I'm hearing you know yeah. just like they're saying Macaulay Culkin's gonna be in the new home and home, home alone I'm like <laughs> I just hear about it I don't know um that would be cool though I also wouldn't be yeah. surprised if Keeper Sutherland made an appearance, even though he died. Or well, spoiler alert, here we go, giving you guys the spoilers. <laughs> but you know, with it being with it being a remake and with it being a complete remake of the original and not having any sort of um Halloween 2018 style progression from that, it's, it's a complete rework from what I've read online. I'd be interested to see Keeper Sutherland come back and maybe take on the role of head vampire Max. That would be that would be a very cool turn of events. I mean whether he would do that these days or not, I don't know. But some, it would be nice to see him in one of those sort of Godfather-style roles where he's he's ahead. Even if he just came in at like the last five minutes at the end and was like the daddy of everything, and <laughs> he was the one that had to be taken down. Just a nice little nod to to everything he's done before. It would be really cool. Nowadays they can make that work with the makeup, all yeah. that stuff. They can make it work if he does. I mean, even as an aged man, you know, he could be an old. He could be an old vampire. There would be no need to, to de-age him to look like he did in the original. Just as a as a completely separate character, just use him as an actor in in in, a, in an important role towards the final act. I mean, as for Feldman, he I've seen I've seen some of his later work in his career and. It's probably best if he stays away if this film wants to succeed, if I'm honest with you. I know the fans will probably cry out loud, like, what are you talking about? But let nostalgia go. This man is not a very talented actor these days, and he needs to sort of step aside. And <laughs> he's doing a lot of music right now. He's a musician. So he's, like, releasing yeah, I've all these. Yeah. I haven't heard any of his music. I've seen some of his Michael Jackson tribute dance moves on TV before, but <laughs> <laughs> that's about as far as my knowledge of him goes. There was a Netflix film called Blatter. I think it's only a 30 minute long film but I might actually check that out after tonight that mm -hmm. he's in as a lead character which I need to watch but yeah if I remember rightly when I saw it the first time around he was pretty dreadful in that and that was fairly recently as well yeah and um, just to wrap it up uh, man first off I, I couldn't thank you enough for being a part of this movie review it's the first time actually that I had a uh, guest um, stick through the movie review, you know, I mean, we had Scott stay through a little bit of the first one, but, you know, I appreciate it. Um, this movie, you can't go wrong with, so I highly recommend it. I'm sure you highly recommend it as well, right? Yeah, 100%. Top, top 10 for me, easily. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, The Lost Boys, 1987. Forget about how much money it made. Look at the rating. The rating speaks for itself, okay? 76%. But think of all the sales. Think of all the the cult classic, you know, the, the nostalgic part of it, you know, it just, it just became automatic, you know, fan favorite, you know, years later, like he said, he wasn't a fan of it as a kid, but as he got older, he became obsessed with the film. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, once again, thanks Mark for tuning in full for joining me. <laughs> this is out of the realm of normality for me. So to be involved with people such as yourself and Scott and, and all the rest yeah. of it, I just, I'm really grateful for you to all, to all of you for, for sort of bringing me along for the ride. Well, I grab your drink because I'm going to give you a cheers, man, to um, a future of luck for your show, your wife and your kids and yourself, man. Thank you. And thank you very keep, much. Keep that. growing, thank man. You. Keep growing. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your support. It's, it's, it's always appreciated. Thank you. Same here, man. Same here. That is Mark Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. How did we do? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Don't hang up. You see that? You don't see that, like, on the screen? No. What is that?
it's freaking me out. Right? I'm like going crazy over here. I'm like going crazy. Like, what is that? Oh, Jesus Christ, get the spray bottle. <laughs> I got the pineapple. I got the, I got the Hawaiian punch. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, it, it really is like a bad episode of Scooby Doo. You've you've unveiled me as the villain. What is going on? Here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm only nipping in quick. I heard you were reviewing uh, a movie that's my favourite movie ever. Really? Well, you recommend it. Was it. One, it's my <laughs> top vampire movies ever. And I'm taking a swing now by your reaction. You've crucified it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would never do think it's so sacrilegious. I love, I love Lost Boys. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love it. So I, I wanted you to jump in quickly and just go, Cry, little sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you both doing anyway? You good? I'm well, I'm well, thank you, sir. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. It's funny, I've, I don't got, know. I've got my friend out. My friend's out ready for Halloween. Are you getting Halloween preparations in order already? Yeah, yeah, we, we started. Oh, it all came out of the loft about two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Getting so, that organised with it all. Yeah, I, I, I've got it kind of out and I'm starting to go through it, but I've not gone, I've not started putting stuff out yet. I, I try to wait, especially out the front, because the neighbours think I'm fucking insane as it is. <laughs> How long were you worried? I can't about? wait to see all your house all up in all its glory this year. Ah, uh, it's funny. I mean, the neighbours, because I do lots of videos and reels and stuff in costume, they can see me through my conservatory window. And every now and then, I'll get the neighbours walk past and go, <laughs> so I, "I'm there in a Michael Myers mask dancing around." And I'll just go, "Hello." <laughs> How long were you in the mask? Uh, what time did your show start? <laughs> I wanted him to surprise you like so bad. I was like, I think Mark's gonna enjoy the hell out of this. I think it'll be freaking hilarious to close this out. And... <laughs> oh, I messed it up with my settings as well. I had no idea. And you, you was doing this, and you was like fly for it. I was like, what's going yeah. on? Am I, am I missing something here? What's happening? <laughs> he was looking behind. Oh, I've just noticed you've got the Lost Boys on the TV behind you as well. Yeah. I had to set it up ready, but we just I just watched it before we started, so I thought, well, I'll just rewind it to the credit scene and just put it on for the background. <clears throat> it's not quite as um, impactful as your background, Scott, but it's, uh, it's a thought that counts, you know? It, it is very impactful. I noticed it straight away. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already uh, finished the, the interview with Mark already, so... Um, this is just going to be a little extra treat for the viewers, okay? So, but you wanted to say something about the uh, Lost Boys, Scott? Uh, only that it's incredible, and I wanted to be a Lost Boy, and I still want to be a Lost Boy. <laughs> uh, there goes our <laughs> Halloween costumes. <laughs> what are you doing this year, Scott? Are you, are you allowed to tell us yet what, what your plans are for Halloween with your costume? I... I haven't decided. I've got so many. I've got probably 25 costumes that I could use, but I, I'm i kind of swaying towards Beetlejuice. Oh, really? The full stripey mm. black and white get-up? Uh, I don't know if I want to go for that or I want to go for the, like the red velvet suit. That would be better, yeah. <laughs> Did he I'll say velvet? See that. Velvet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a frilly cravat as well. That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's where my head is at at the moment, but that might change. I, I don't. I genuinely don't know. Yeah, because because we're doing we're doing your Halloween special, aren't we, Bruce, in fancy dress? Yes, we are. All of us are getting back together for. Uh, it's going to be the day before Halloween, so that's going to be pretty cool. Yes. And when we're going to when we're going to record that? I was saying about two weeks, maybe. Uh, we'll see on everybody's schedule, see if we can make it work. As long as it's a week yeah. or two before Halloween, we're good to go. So I can edit it and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I'm just, I'll need to make sure my costume's all sorted and ready to go for that then. Because yeah, I'm got, trying to got, get you got time. Moment, you got... but I just can't seem to, I can't seem to get it. I can't seem to find it in stock anywhere. It's annoying me. 
No, yeah, you you good. You got time. It's probably going to be uh, when you. What were you going to say, Scott? I was going to ask if Mark was going for the Borat Mankini. Look at his work. Can you imagine if I just came on in the fall? <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> you know there's going to be a GIF waiting for this. <laughs> oh, man, you guys you guys are crazy. <laughs> oh, man, but man, Scott, are you, uh, that was... Are you finding you're using that blackout, Scott? Are you, are you coping tonight without social media? Yeah, I, I've done okay. I think the thing that bugged me is when I, I jumped to Twitter, I'd done what everyone else done, I went, uh, Instagram and Facebook are broken, I'll go to Twitter. I got there <laughs> yeah. and then it stopped working, I was like, oh, come on. Yeah, so is, into, is Twitter down as well now? It's really sketchy yeah. now. Because yeah. everybody's coming at once, so it's like, of course it's yeah. going to crash, you know? Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm not going to sit on TikTok. I had a look at all, I just saw was loads of memes of, of how Twitter was... <laughs> was rising up above every other social media and stuff and icons and it, it made yeah. me chuckle but I haven't I haven't tried. I don't even know if is it is it still out now? It's still yeah still stuff. down still no Instagram. Yeah. yeah. That's where all the trends. business but man, well this is gonna be one long edit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I wanna thank um real quick, you know, take the time to thank my guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and that is Mark Wilson from MW Horror Reviews. Mark, get close to the screen. Come on, come on. Get your drink again. We already did it once. We're going to do it again. And I know the Scott's down there, but I know he doesn't have a drink. With him. <laughs> Just put up your I hand. I do. I've got soft drink. Oh, there I'm... you go. All of us will turn <laughs> together, yeah? The three amigos back together again. <laughs> yes. Cheers. I hope this was a good surprise for you, Mark. I did. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, man. And, um, yeah. But yeah, thank you, Scott, for coming on, man. I appreciate that because that was a nice surprise for him. He, he definitely no, enjoyed No worries at all. We're always ready whenever you are. You know that. Yeah, there you go. And um, when I have you on in the, again, I'll have this guy stop by for a quick chat. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Come on with a mask on. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> I got to do an emergency uh, interview with Scott again and then he'll pop on with your... <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you guys and thank you mark i really appreciate this this really means a lot man. anytime man anytime i'm always always available you know that ladies and gentlemen coming up next a great music performance by a great band and i'm telling you right now you do not want to tune away here they are sir shen and zaritz kaya right here ladies and gentlemen a journey cover. Take it away.
That was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you guys. What a great performance that was. I mean, wasn't that amazing? I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, if you guys want to know any more about Sir Shen and Zaritskaya, the links are going to be below, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for tuning, for joining the show. I hope to have you guys down, have you guys back down the line. Sorry, it's been a long show. I'm a little out of it. But yeah, thank you guys again. Also, a huge thank you to my guest tonight, my partner in crime for the, for the evening, MW Horror Views, Mark Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mark. And Rock. And Scott, man, thanks for tuning. Thanks for joining the show, Scott. I appreciate it. That was a nice surprise. Mark definitely appreciated that. But man, thank you guys for tuning into the show. I'm gonna end it now because it's a long ass show, and I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty, and I need to get the hell out of here. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, please share, and also, um, like I said, we'll see you next week. Okay. Um, I'm gonna keep you guys updated about next week. Okay. Nah, not to worry you guys, I ain't going anywhere, but I'll keep you guys updated. Got some stuff in the works right now, and I'm getting a little overcrowded. So, just wanted to let you guys know, I'm not going anywhere. Just stay stay tuned to my social media accounts. Um, until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Take care of each other. I love you guys, I really do. And, um, and that's it. So, uh, until next time, I'll see you then. Peace, love, and Whatever else that guy says on that old Soul Train show. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. See you then. All right.